I love America. I am just embarrassed that it has been taken over by people like evangelicals, by people who do not believe in science and rationality. It is the 21st century, and I'll tell you, my friend, the future does not belong to the evangelicals. The future does not belong to religion. That's another reason why religion disgusts me, because it is arrogance parading as humility. There is nothing humble about somebody getting up there and saying, thank you, God, for this award. What they're really saying is, thank you, God, for making me so wonderful and so talented. But uh, that aside, um, when, when you were a kid and they were telling you whatever you believe in religion, do you think if they had switched the fairy tales that they read to you in bed with the Bible, you would know the difference? Do you think if there was the fairy tale about a man who lived inside of a whale and it was religion that Jack built the beanstalk today, you would know the difference? Why do you believe in one fairy tale and not the other? Just because adults told you it was true and they scared you into believing it at pain of death, at pain of burning into hell. I never said I didn't believe in God. I said I don't believe in religion. Religion okay, is a let's religion. Say Jesus Christ. As excuse Savior. me. Re, religion is a bureaucracy between man and God. There's a very big oh, difference. I can, I can agree with you. I agree with you about that. But I'm. But Joe, about... if you if you were born in Pakistan, you wouldn't have be, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be believing in Jesus Christ right now. You'd be believing in Muhammad. So it's completely and terribly arbitrary, isn't it? You know, I, I, I wasn't born in Pakistan, Bill, so I don't know if that's the case or not. But, but uh, if you had been, you wouldn't believe, be living in Jesus Christ. You would have been well, told another fairy tale when you were a child, and you'd believe that. That's one thing that Bush and Gore have in common that I don't like about either one of them. Which is? They have invoked Jesus. You know, Jesus is my advisor. Jesus is the political philosopher I care most about. Gore said, I, I consult that saying, what would Jesus do? I don't want my president asking, what would Jesus do? When you're voting on the stealth bomber, you know, that's a decision for Caesar, not for the <laughs> religious leader. So, you know, these guys are not above bringing in anything to get a vote, including Jesus. But if it's your perfect holy book written by God, why is there stuff in it that makes no sense? Well, let me break or this to immoral? you. Let me break this to you. I respect the Bible, and I, and I take it as an allegorical book. But I'm a Christian, so the New Testament is what uh, I believe in, and the Old Testament, <laughs> written by it. prophets. I love the you way know, the Christian... Right, but, but, but they're both written by God, right? No, I mean, God didn't sit down and write it. They book. were written by prophets, and they were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and God, real human beings who actually I, took it down. You know, I, I know all the Christians want to get behind the happy half of the Bible, where Jesus walks on water. <laughs> well, maybe, turns maybe that's the love half the of the Bible that teaches you to love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. maybe, maybe that's but what we're trying to get behind here, Mar. I don't know really the downside but you, but of that. you can't. But you can't disavow the Old Testament. That I'm not is, disavowing anything. I'm telling you what Jesus... I believe in, and what I believe in is love your neighbor as yourself, and don't call them stupid because they don't agree with you politically. <laughs> but, uh, but if you're saying that some things in the Bible are true and other things aren't, it's not like the Constitution, Bill. It was written by God or inspired by God. So how come so much of it is either wacky or immoral. But Bill, the only reason you believe what you believe is for two, it can only come from two places. Either somebody told you, like you're a minister, you're, you're a priest, a preacher, or you read it in one of the holy books. All right. Well, right? I, I, I read, you know I read the you New know. Testament. There doesn't seem to be a lot of downside to being like Jesus. He seemed to be a pretty good guy to me, Bill. And I think if Jesus were in charge of the country guy, he, or the world, else? we'd all be in a, a lot better place, would we not? Right. I think if Jesus was in charge of the country, we probably would have health care for everybody. All right. And I that might be Jesus true quite siding, because he could multiply the loaves and fishes points. and we wouldn't have to have, you know, a lot of stuff that we have to have. All right. Now, multiply the loaves and fishes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And he I'm could feed everybody. Who's, who's the, I'm the bad guy for saying people are dumb. Sixty percent of the American people, Bill, believe the Noah's Ark story is literally true. OK. Well, I don't know any of those three. I don't know right? how to def you know, I think they found Noah's Ark on some mountain anybody? in Turkey. Didn't they find it up there? But, but that's in your Bible. I mean, if you're a religious person and the Bible is written by God, why isn't why is stuff in the Bible untrue? Well, because I mean, it's allegorical, Bill. Story, I'm sure you know. In your, it, I'm sure you know it's, it's in, allegorical, and these well, are parables, and they're designed I, to pay, to oh, to really? teach you a greater truth that it apparently has eluded you. But you well, know, it's well, not okay. a literalist well, what, interpretation what, what, what of the Bible. The, 
Well, I thought it was the word of God. I thought it was literal, and a lot of religious people do. Okay, what about the part in the Bible that says if you see your neighbor working on a Sunday, you should kill him? Is that a parable or is that literal? I, I think that's probably uh, what. I, I don't know that parable. Can you? Is that Romans, Ecclesiastes? Where did that come from? Uh, it's not from? a parable. No, no. It's a, it, it's in Deuteronomy. It's a law. It's a well, I, you know, I was raised Catholic, uh, Larry, and um, Catholic you know, and Jewish, right? Well, I wasn't raised Jewish. My mother is Jewish, but no. I never even knew I was half Jewish till I was a teenager. Uh, I was just so frightened about the Catholics and everything that was going on there in the church. And uh, and I was never, you know, molested or anything, and, uh, and I'm a little insulted. <laughs> uh, I guess they never found me attractive, and uh, that's really their loss, because... You were no, uh, special, Bill. I was very special. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just, I'm shocked that people are finding out that priests are no altar boys. You know, uh, <laughs> it's the institution that really needs fixing, and of course you really can't fix an institution when it is religion, because when you say religion, immediately you can get away with anything. I mean, look what the Muslims did with women around the world. If you did that to anybody else, if it wasn't under the guise of religion, you could never get away with stuff like that. So, you see no good in religion? Not very much, no. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, um, as long as there are people who think that this is the only way you're going to have wars and killing and death. Uh, I don't think the hate that comes from the Muslim world comes from religion. The hate comes from someplace deeper. But the religion gives it a noble framework to put it in. Because the idea that any person on earth can tell you with such specifics what happens when you die just blows my mind. That somebody on earth, another person, can just say to you, oh yes, and what happens when you get to heaven? Yes, you, you'll meet Jesus, he's wearing a white robe, there's a little gold piping on the sleeve, and then you go in this room and you eat eggs and you watch F Troop. Are you kidding? What are you talking about? You're just a person like I am. You are clueless. You have no idea what happens. Don't you me. think Rick believes it? Of course he believes it, but how, how ridiculous is that? Like if I went to the Himalayas to find the holiest of holy men in the world who had all the answers, the guru, when I got to the top of the mountain, I said, please, Master, can you, can you help me with the ultimate meaning of life? He'd say, yeah, there's a guy, Rick, in Long Beach, uh, Rick Warren. Go ask him. He knows exactly what happens when you die. And, you know, it's, that is my ultimate message. Unless a god told you personally what happens when you die, it all came from another person with no more mental powers than you have, and you don't know. So just man up and say, I don't know. But they believe. And believe, yes. belief is a tough thing to counter. Yes, you know? and I understand why it's a luxury for some people who don't need it, and why a lot of people are less fortunate, and they do need it. Uh, so we're not trying to point fingers in this movie. I think we do it. We're laughing all the way through it. I think we're winking and having a good time, and right. we're not trying to be judgmental. But at some point, you know, mankind is going to have to shed this skin if he's going to move forward. I, I, I do have a, a serious intellectual problem with it. And on another level, it just ticks me off. It's just the ultimate hustle. It's just pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. You know, why can't they? I always ask, I ask Jesus in this at Holy Land, why can't God just defeat the devil and get rid of evil? You know, and it's the same reason the comic book character can't get rid of his nemesis. Then there's no story. If God gets rid of the devil, and he could, he's all-powerful, well, then there's no fear, there's no reason to come to church, there's no reason to pass the plate, we're all out of a job. You know, it's got to go on. Well, we're mostly trying to make people laugh, but I also would like to arouse the somewhat like 16% of people who I call rationalists. They would call them atheists or agnostics in America. It sounds like it's a small minority, but 16% is actually bigger than blacks or Jews or homosexuals or NRA members or teachers union, Hispanics. If those people stood up and made themselves heard, but they never do. Do you think it might be more? Do you think there are people who yes. just don't admit it? Abs you know what they are? There are a lot of people like me, like I was. We make a, a point in the movie to show that my evolution toward where I was, where I am now, was gradual. You know, I still had, uh, later in life, I, I wasn't a religious person. I definitely didn't believe in the Jesus story after we get the, uh, quit the Catholic Church. But I did have an idea of some imaginary man who lived in my head who got mad at me if I was bad and who I had to bargain with if I was bad. And I was always being like, oh, please, God, get me out of this. If you just get me out of this, I promise I will never do this again. So, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. 
You have to come to it slowly. I, you know what the Scientology <laughs> creation myth is? They think that 12 trillion years ago, <laughs> a time frame no scientists believe exists, but okay. 12 trillion years ago, a galactic warrior named Xenu was looking to depopulate his planet, so he took all the souls to Earth, buried them under volcanoes, and blew them up later with atom bombs. Now, just for a moment, imagine the balls it takes to stand in front of another human being and tell them what happened 12 trillion years ago. And I don't mean in general terms, like the planets were cooling. I mean he knows the dude's name. <laughs> Zenu. Oh, yeah, that cat. From 12 trillion? Yes, of course, Zenu. In America, if you say the word faith, which is what Hobby Lobby basically mm -hmm. said, this is our faith, everything stops. Everybody just throws logic out the window and puts that at the head of the class. And nobody ever really says what I keep trying to say, which is, Faith, it just means that's my opinion. That's your opinion. Your faith is an opinion. I think it's a particularly stupid opinion. I have never understand why faith is good. People say the word faith and everybody just backs off. Just tell me why the purposeful suspension of critical thinking, which is faith, why that's a good thing. Why is this a good thing when you go, you know what, I'm not even going to apply logic to this situation. How about that? Right. Most European countries are mostly over faith. You know, the Scandinavian countries are, you know, 80 to 90 percent atheistic. Even Italy, I think, is, <laughs> oh, yes. is I think 50 percent <laughs> yeah. atheist. I think England, same thing. You know, they're over that. They're over religion and they're over marriage. They're not over commitment. You know, they have babies <laughs> and families. They just don't feel the need to you know, involve the government in their love life, which I've never kind of understood either. I really understand how this nightmare of clerical pedophilia could have happened, because if you're a priest and you spend your whole life spewing this nonsense about the snake and the whale and the apple and the rib, it's like, oh, fuck it, just blow me, kid. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what, just... Also, what is so hard about just saying the words, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, there are questions that plague all of us. How did we get here? What happens when we die? Is there a heaven? Am I on the list? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Yes. <laughs> but why would you believe what some other human being whose brain, I promise you, is no bigger or better than yours, when he tells you he knows what happens when you die? Don't masturbate now. You won't get to hang out with Jesus in heaven. How do I know? I, I've got a pointy hat. <laughs> I've got a hat and a robe and I have smoke and a wand. It's so gay, the whole church. It's just, but they just come out of the closet, really. I mean, it's just so, you know, every Sunday it's such a pageant with the costumes and the wands and the goblets and the smoke and the kneeling down in front of another man with your mouth open. <laughs> I do not represent the thoughts of the majority. And that's okay, because the majority, to me, is not always that wise. And people have this crazy idea that this country was founded by our founding fathers on the idea of as much input as we can get from the people. Quite the opposite. Our founding fathers made this a republic and not a democracy because they feared the mob. Said the Greeks, they did not think that the mob really the mob, but the vast majority, uh, should be that connected to government. That is why they put Washington where it was, away from the financial centers, which is all about what's going on now with campaign finance reform. They never wanted that kind of influence, and they certainly didn't want it from the howling masses. So, you know, when, when people say you don't uh, conform necessarily to the broad mainstream, I say thank you. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment.